bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly, some human mathematician once calculated, and yet it flies. How? Now I will explain it to you, but first let me explain flying, because I received a question from a youngling named Chad. How do birds fly? Of all the things I cannot do, that is what I wish the most. I would love to be able to fly. Sometimes I dream of flying over my forest and looking down on it, and it's nice. Then usually, that dream is interrupted by a drop of dew that falls on my nose and I wake up. Now your internet is truly a wonder when you use it to find knowledge. For example, did you know that the discovery of flight in the animal world has happened at least four times in history? In insects, pterosaurs, bats and birds. All these groups have developed flight from different ancestors that couldn't fly. Fascinating, starting from scratch each time. But why? We don't exactly know, and it's okay to admit that, but birds initially had smaller limbs similar to wings, which helped them run easier or jump over some rock like some chickens do today. Well, yes, chickens don't fly, but they can flutter a bit and hop over a bush. But why did they start flying? Because they realized that it would be easier to escape from other animals hunting them or to find new food. Well, I would too. Their forelimbs became more powerful and they jumped higher until they finally developed proper wings with which they flew. Once they started flying, they had to adapt, and they adapted. Bodies smaller than their wings, shoulders oriented differently, hollow and light bones, not to mention feathers. But flight can also happen without feathers. Look at the bats, for example. They evolved specifically not only for flying, but also for hunting in the dark with their special sonars. What? New word! Sonar. It's when you use sound bouncing to navigate in space. You humans can't do that, but I have a fun task for you, which you can do with someone, a sibling, or a friend. Sit on a chair in the middle of a room and cover your eyes with your hands. The other person should snap their fingers or clap lightly in the room, and you guess if it's in front, behind, right, left. You'll see it's really fun. It's not exactly a bat sonar, but now you realize that with sound you can see. However, their sound device is much more sophisticated. What? Ah, yes, let's get back to flying. And do you know how a bird even rises with its wings? You must first understand that air is not empty. Yes, even though you don't see it, it's full of gases and tiny particles. Just very, very rare. Who said that? Well, here, I'll prove it to you. You don't see it, but you feel it. When you blow out a birthday candle, for example, or when the wind blows, what's that? Yes, there is still some density, some gusts that can touch you. Now listen carefully. Bird's wings have specific curvature, so that air has to travel a longer distance above the wing. This shape allows the air to flow faster over the wing than underneath it. This difference in speed creates low pressure above the wing and that helps the bird to rise into the air as if something is sucking it upwards. This phenomenon is called lift. Also, it's important at what angle the wing is positioned, and then it pushes the air downwards. Interesting, isn't it? Oh, you humans figured that out while I wasn't paying attention to you, and suddenly, more than a hundred winters ago, you made metal birds that fly through the sky. Can you imagine how surprised I was when I first saw airplanes? And now I know what they are. You still don't understand. What? Ah, that word, lift. I have an interesting experiment. If you do it, you'll understand. Take a plain piece of paper, hold it with both hands by just one edge, and place it in front of your mouth. If you blow below into it, what will happen to the paper? Of course, it will rise. But now, if you blow above it, what will happen? Incredible, yes. It will rise again because that lift is created. Do you understand now? Good. We laughed in the forest when we heard that your mathematician calculated that a bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly because its body is too heavy compared to its wings. They are just so cute and fluffy, chubby. Of course, they can fly, but why? Insects don't fly exactly like birds. They discovered flight much, much earlier, and they use a slightly different system, although the same principle. They create vortices of air on the leading edge of their wings, 
while birds use the aerodynamics of their feathered wings to create lift. Insects usually have two basic wing beats, downwards and upwards, with rapid wing rotation. And yes, their muscles are not in their wings, but in their bodies, so they can flap much faster than birds. But let me ask you, how is it possible that a scientist calculated something wrong? My dear ones, science is not all-knowing. It's okay not to know something. What's important is not to think that you're always right, and there's no other way. Knowledge, formula, or information. Always ask, question things, and verify. When that human mathematician determined that a bumblebee shouldn't fly, and yet it does, scientists spent years researching to find out how that's possible, and simply they found a new explanation for all insects. The mathematician just showed that we don't know everything about flying, and that's why nobody criticized him. But flying, I hope it's clearer to all of you, not just Chad, how it's even possible to fly, and that you can talk about it with your parents and friends, and that we will admire birds together the next time we observe them in flight, because now we know how they do it. Do you want to know more? Have you ever seen some plant seeds using these same tricks to fly farther, to be carried away by the wind? Well, we have a lot more topics we can talk about. Send me your questions and thoughts. I'll be happy to answer. Yours truly, Troll Mitros. Naturally.